Here Hello, everyone. Welcome to ALX 307, which is uh, voice enabling your home and devices using Amazon Alexa and Brookfield Residential. Uh, my name is Nathan Grice. I'm a senior sm uh, smart home solutions architect on the Alexa team. And this is Mark Gregus. He's with Brookfield Residential. And he's going to tell you a little bit about what they're doing in their homes they're building today. Mark? Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I know there's a lot to see here at the conference, so we truly do appreciate you spending some time with us. I want you to stop for a minute and imagine what pops into your head when I say the word smart home. So we all have an image, right, a concept of what a smart home is, and it may vary, but I think we all agree that the smart home and concept is something that will enhance our lives. And so with that, I'm not sure if any of you are, if you're old enough to remember a show called The Jetsons, um, about a family that interacted with their house, interacted with their maid. Does anybody know the name of the maid? Rosie, there you go. You get into the party free tonight. Um, Rosie, their car, their dog, which is kind of odd. I like the furry kind. But anyway... They, they interacted, and that set in our minds a concept, a dream of what a smart home would be. So over the last five decades since that show and other futuristic shows have come out, we as builders tried to attain that dream, right? So we've tried products, different concepts, technologies, but they never really got us to where we wanted to be. They never fulfilled that dream. Until now, with Amazon and Alexa, we see that dream being fulfilled. So Brookfield Residential has collaborated with Amazon to deliver our first Brookfield Residential smart home powered by Amazon Alexa. So what we're trying to do is how do we bring this technology to the masses? This has happened in the custom home space for a while, but we, being a production home builder, we're thinking, how, do we, how can we embrace this technology and bring it to the masses and make it available, make it affordable, make it intuitive, make it adaptable? And then what do we need to do, primarily, as a builder, to understand the home and what we need to do to engineer and architect a home that takes advantage of these technologies? A little bit about Brookfield. I'm sure you all know about Amazon, so I'll tell you a little bit about Brookfield. We are a leading home builder and land developer in North America. We have operations in US and Canada. Uh, we're in 12 major markets. We have over 50 years uh, building experience, and we're really focused on uh, sustainable use of land, proper resources, and customers. In fact, our mission is really clear in everything we do, and it's not just a slogan, but it's creating the best places to call home. And this permeates everything we do, from when we acquire land to where we develop it, to the product development, through to the delivery, and ongoing customer service. It defines who we are. What also defines Brookfield, as it does Amazon, is innovation. And that's a little unusual, quite honestly, for, for home builders, is what attracted me to being in IT and working for Brookfield is the fact that Brookfield is always innovative, always looking for what's the next new technology, the next thing we can deliver to our customers. And so we, we have a proven track record of that, in fact. So in 2008, we developed a home called the Hybrid Home. And this hybrid home was a award-winning home in green technologies. And what we did was we tried to find every potential energy-efficient product we could and put into, into this hybrid home. It was a success. A year later, we decided, let's open an energy lab. So we actually took a home, and we took everything we learned from our hybrid home, combined that with renewable energies, built a home that acted as a lab so we can monitor our progress, our successes, our failures. We included this with, with renewable energy, so we had solar, we had geothermal, 
And in fact, we had wind, which is how it, uh, innovative, cutting edge, because we had to engineer the roof system to hold a small wind turbine. But we had all these technologies available in this time just to understand what is available, what works, what doesn't work. Lastly, last um, 2015, we delivered uh, probably our most ambitious home yet, which is a pure blue home. It took all the best from the hybrid, all the best from the energy lab, put them into one home with the goal of obtaining net zero, which is zero energy consumption. In fact, this home got an impressive negative one on the HERS rating, which is the home energy rating system scale. It's amazing. So again, Brookfield being innovative, always looking for what's the next technology, which brings us to, to the smart home. And what we thought we could do with this, once we began to understand what Amazon had with uh, Amazon and Alexa and how we can integrate this into our home, we were excited, very excited. Talked with Amazon, we did everything we could to get a community, get a house built. In fact, we have our construction manager, um, a director of construction here who built the home and the home was actually built in, I think, under 90 days. So we, we had to rush this home because what we wanted to be first. We wanted to be there. We wanted to take advantage of this technology. So um, we, we first had to understand what are we going to deliver. So we based it on the demographics of the, the community. And the community in which we built this was our Avondale community, which is 30 miles west of our nation's capital. And this is a suburban neighborhood middle-class family, we kind of modeled it after uh, two school-age children, and we thought through different scenarios, different memory points that we could create in this home with the technology. And understand that we didn't know anything really about this technology, we knew it existed, we were hearing about it, we were hearing from, uh, certainly from Amazon, all the capabilities, but we, were, we wanted to think through what could we actually do with this home. So we took our traditional 300 square foot home, looks the same from the outside as any other home in the neighborhood, but on the inside, completely different story. We included a voice enabled home security system, garage door, windows blind, ceiling fans, some of the things you've seen in the teeny home that was built here um, and is on display at, at the expo. Indoor outdoor lighting, HVAC, the heating and air conditioning, fireplacing, fireplace, and we also incorporated something to monitor our energy, back to our energy lab and our concept homes. Um, so we built all this into, into the home being voice activated. We also um, took advantage of GE's Wi-Fi appliances, the amazing products. These work incredible. I mean, the, this was our first entrance into this, this space, and, and so now we're able to voice activate these appliances. We can preheat the oven. We can tell the refrigerator to go into turbo freeze or turbo cold. We can ask to heat up the water for your coffee, and we know as home builders that the kitchen is, is like a main spot for people. People love their kitchen. They want all the latest in that kitchen, so having these appliances, but having them voice enabled is just absolutely incredible. And, and everyone who's seen this so far is just absolutely amazed uh, with those capabilities. What we also did and began to explore is what could we do with the skills? Of course, we use a lot of the native um, skills that, that are available with, with the products we included, which we'll talk about in a second. But we have this other concept, this idea to create a virtual sales manager. And so we began to work through what that might look like. So in our home, we have a pressure pad when you walk in, and it can tell the direction you're moving. And so when you enter the home, it welcomes you and gives you a little bit of information about the home, and then you can begin interacting. So you can ask about the smart home. We'll tell you, Alexa will tell you a little bit about the smart home. You can ask about Brookfield Residential. You'll get a little bit of information about Brookfield Residential, or even the community, some of the amenities, and the types of homes that are in the community. But the vision with this, where we're going next, is to take that to the next level with the virtual sales manager. What we want to be able to do is have the customer 
of course, be greeted by our physical sales manager, but the virtual sales manager will allow the customer to wander through the home and into each room, ask Alexa about the features, what options are available. Allow the customer then to pick an option and add it to their virtual shopping cart. Maybe ask Alexa about what does that do to my the, uh, monthly um, payment. Do that, allow the customer to actually walk through, be interactive with home. We've already done a lot with interactive technologies with our customers. In fact, we were, we were one of the first, I think, to do, intera um, to do dynamically printed brochures. So our customer goes through the home now, they can look at the particular house that they like, and rather than just giving them a standard old brochure, they get a custom printed one with the features and everything that they uh, want in their home. We, we envision the same thing, but now powered by Amazon Alexa. We also, with our custom skills, we wanted to create scenes that we would give our, give our customers some idea of the capabilities, right? We couldn't think through everything, but you know, we, so we have a, a Alexa turn on relax, which is part of the owner's bathroom suite. So they go and they turn in the water and say, let's relax, and the blinds lower, the overhead lights dim, the star panel, we have a star panel, on the ceiling comes on, LED candles light up, and then soothing spa music comes on, right? The idea here is we, we're, we're educating the customer. We want them to see, here are the capabilities. I mean, this is all new, right? This is something you're gonna be able to do in your, in your home with these technologies. So our criteria for the products, we wanted to use native technology, basically things that were certainly compatible with Alexa, not too complicated, kind of off the shelf, as much as possible and, and um, affordable. Our value add into this whole project, not being in the technology space, but being a home builder, is what do we do with the home to enable it to take advantage of these technologies? So we thought through various places where we may want to have like Cat6 PoE run, right? Because we don't wanna to have to be changing batteries out of video cameras, or we may have high bandwidth needs in certain part of the homes. So let's think through that in advance. Let's get that stuff wired up um, for the customer in advance. We also use Control 4, which is a home integration uh, automation system. It, it, they're, they're a leader in this market and uh, incredible the, the integration capabilities and the number of devices they support. So we have Alexa talking with the Control 4 system, then controlling uh, our blinds and our lights and all the various um, devices within the house. So as I said, why do we use a CAT uh, 6 PO? Oopsie, I'm sorry, I went forward. <laughs> Pardon me. Key vendors. This, this, is, this is critical because, of course, we're not in the technology space. So we teamed up early on with a number of key vendors. Cyber Manor was like, uh, helped lead us through the whole process. They, they helped us understand where we should be going. They've, they've been in this space for a while, what we should be doing, helping us think through scenarios of the home. Um, Quinex, fantastic company, helped us develop these custom skills. You know, they, they walked us through that. They've helped guide us through what this virtual sales manager is gonna be. Bethesda Systems, they were our integrator, and we realized early on we needed something a little bit above what we normally have in terms of that type of subcontractor working in our home. So we, we brought in Bethesda, and they were, they were able to custom program the Control 4 system and also get our, get our smart home up and running. And then one of our traditional vendors, which is Vintage Security, did the all the wiring for us. So future-proofing the home, I don't know that there's anything really you can say about future-proofing. What is future-proofing? But anyway, again, we tried to think through where are these drops for the CAT 6? Where do we put in WAPs in the house, wireless access points, and do heat maps to make sure you have proper coverage over your whole property, right? Uh, let's put in conduit, not just for future solar panels, but for future wiring, because how how obnoxious and difficult it is, it is to try to run wiring in your home after you got the drywall up. So we're thinking through all that, realizing that people are gonna add devices into their home. 
and we pre-wired every all the the rooms with uh, ceiling to be able uh, to add uh, ceiling speakers. So really, the for us, the future is unlimited. Um, with the voice-enabled home automation, with Amazon Alexa, we see the possibilities to deliver great products to our customers really un, uh, is unlimited. And as a builder, we know we have a lot to learn, a lot of products to explore as we go forward. But we know with Amazon and our um, business partners, we're going to get there. And all this really is about, for us, delivering the best places to call home. But also, it's about creating a place like our our lab, creating a place today and in the future where devices and skills that you all create will have a home to live. And we want that to be Brookfield Residential Home, Smart Home. So with that, we're gonna leave you just with a quick little video and then Nathan's gonna take over from there. This is how we're going to live. All of us, connected to our homes like never before, by the sound of our voice saying her name, Alexa, turn on the lights, raise the blinds, let in the sunshine, Alexa, play some music. The Smart Home, built by Brookfield Residential, powered by Amazon Alexa, makes life easier and more convenient than ever. One home powered by your voice. Say the word and step inside. This is only the beginning. Brookfield Residential is built for style and wired to innovate. Amazon always delivers, always brings the big ideas to your doorstep. The Brookfield Residential Smart Home is always learning and we're just getting started. So what's next? What does the future hold? What if the shower started, the coffee brewed, and Alexa gave you the traffic report? All because you said, Alexa, good morning. What if the day's headlines appeared in your bathroom mirror while you brushed your teeth and combed your hair? All because you said, Alexa, what's happening? What if the smart home sensed that your gutters were nearly full and reminded you to have them clean? or ordered a new air filter when it was almost time to replace the old one? What if the Brookfield Residential Smart Home picked out the perfect movie every Friday? Because Friday night is family night. It can happen. Anything is possible. This is the Brookfield Residential Smart Home. All right, well thank you, Mark. And just a note, we do have some celebrities in the room. Uh, as Mark noted, we talked about the Geneva or GE appliances skill. We actually have the team that built the Geneva skill available on the platform today, sitting here in the front row. So a little bit of a uh, thanks for coming, guys. I've worked with these guys in the past. Um, also, the Control Four skill is publicly available as well. So you can search our skill store uh, if you guys have Control Four systems and want to start using them with voice. Uh, please check that out. Um, so, like I said, I'm Nathan Grice, uh, uh, Smart Home Solutions Architect with Amazon Alexa. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, the, hopefully, the deeper technical dive into um, how to actually build these things. So um, every smart home solution has three components. We have devices, which are things that uh, Mark talked about, thermostats, lighting, AC units, fans, etc. We have a device cloud, which is a back-end system that um, controls or holds device state. Uh, may be used through an app or a, uh, a web application. And in the middle, we have an Alexa smart home skill. But oftentimes, maybe developers are confused about what skills are. So Alexa skills are ways to add capabilities to the Alexa platform. And we kind of think of them as you know, adding skills or adding features so that Alexa gets smarter. So we're going to cover for a minute the dip four different kinds of skills available in the API today. So currently we have audio player skills, which are used to deliver long form audio content, like podcasts, for example. We have flash briefing skills, 
which are used to deliver 90-second audio clips from you know, common news providers like NPR and CNN. We have custom skills. It's kind of our most open-ended API. Um, it allows the developer to define the language, the interactions, and any back-end functionality or devices. And then we have the smart home skills. So I want to take a second to cover the second two. Um, a lot of times there's confusion about what is a smart home skill versus what is a custom skill. And so we're going to take a look at those really quickly. So in a smart home skill, it's designed to provide a unified experience across partner devices so that customers don't have to remember how to talk to this light bulb or that thermostat. Um, the language model is defined for you. So we support things like turn on and turn off and increase and decrease, set percentage, et cetera. And currently we have support for lights, both dimmable and non-dimmable lights, switches, thermostats, fans, and AC units, and most importantly, scenes. And I think that's what Mark was showing you with the let's relax scene, lots of coordinated activity in your environment. That's the kind of thing you know Alexa users want, and I think you guys want. Uh, so this gives you the ability to say something like, I click it again, Alexa, turn on the lights. So a custom skill. It's a unique experience created by the developer. The UX uh, team and the developers are responsible for the language model and the interactions. And it can support custom devices with unique functionality that's possibly maybe outside the scope of the current smart home API. So you, instead of turn on and turn off, we have something like Alexa, ask Raccio to water zone one. One second, get some water. So let's take a look at our three components. If we're gonna build a smart home skill or a smart home solution today, and actually I've got it set, set up here on the stage, we'll get into the nitty gritty in a second. So we, our device, we're gonna be using a Raspberry Pi 3, which is like the firmware running on any smart light bulb or smart uh, switch. We're gonna have an Alexa smart home skill um, so that we can support uh, utterances like turn on and turn off. And we're gonna be using AWS IoT as our device cloud. So if we take a look at the device itself, I've got a Raspberry Pi 3 connected to an IoT relay, this box over here, connected to a lamp. Normally these would all be wrapped up in a single device, like a smart light bulb, um, but in this case, so this is kind of the DIY deep dive maybe some of you were looking for on how to actually build this. Uh, so that's what I have, uh, you know, wired up here for you. So our device cloud, we're going to use AWS IoT. And the reason we're using AWS IoT is because it's a perfect place to maintain device state in the cloud and at scale. And it's really cheap. Uh, you can add devices uh, or device types with common properties. Uh, device or things in AWS IoT are basi basically gettable and settable properties uh, that maintain state through uh, something called a device shadow. And, th and thing shadows are basically JSON properties that are persistent regardless of the physical state of the device. So if the device is disconnected, uh, the thing shadow will maintain the state uh, of the last known property. So next, let's take a look at the smart home skill. So an Alexa smart home skill, in this case, a lamp controller, and I'm just doing on and off functionality. This isn't a dimmable lamp, unfortunately, or maybe the, the relay is not dimmable, to be more specific. So smart home skills have to run in AWS Lambda. Uh, we tie our uh, smart home events that are sent to the Lambda um, as a requirement, whereas in the custom skill side, you could choose to run in Lambda if you want because of the scale um, and how you know, the serverless architecture is a great benefit. Um, or you can run your own uh, web server, your own endpoint, as long as you support the uh, event structure that's sent to your code. So every smart home skill has to support basic, basically two functionalities. It has to support device discovery 
and it has to support device control. So device discovery is basically reporting to the Alexa service the list of devices connected to a user's account. And device control, obviously, is supporting the capabilities of your device. So if it's dimmable, you need to be able to set percentages and support um, events that are increase and decrease, bright and dim, for example, and on off. So let's take a look at some skill code real quick. So in my skill code, I wrote this in Node.js, I define a top-level function to handle those two requirements, discovery and control. So the request is sent in to the function, and it has some you know, key strings in the header that tell you whether it's a control or, or a discovery event. In this case, I'm just switching on that value and then responding accordingly. So we're going to dive one level deeper into the function, take a look at the discovery. So in discovery here, I'm just returning a single device, in this case, a single lamp. I've highlighted the friendly name here, though. It's an important note. This is the name that, when discovered, the user sees in their Alexa app. It's the friendly name. It's also the name they're going to use to interact with the device. So they'll say, turn on the lamp. Or they could say, turn on lamp, but that's a little weird, I think. Um, there's also the appliance ID. Now, this is an important piece for you guys going out there and building this. The appliance ID should be a unique key for this device in this user's account. So when the request comes into your Lambda, uh, you will actually be getting the appliance ID and not the friendly name. And you can see that I've uh, implemented the supported actions of turn on and turn off. Again, there's set percentage, there's temperature controls, depending on the capability of your device. So also of note here is um, normally a, a, a smart home discovery request sends in an OAuth token that is stored by the Alexa service when a user links their account. In this case, I'm just returning a single device for this user because um, we're not differentiating among users, but you'll need to set up some sort of account linking process to store a token that gets passed in with every request. And you can use that value to look up the devices in the user's account and then return them here. So if we look at the handle control function, sorry, I'm going to take another sip here. I've flattened some of the code, done some error checking up front to make sure it's really a control request, make sure it's in the list of supported appliance controls, and then switching on whether it's a turn on request for this lamp or a turn off request, I'm calling another function called update IoT device. And this is really the core of this demo and the core of using AWS IoT to maintain device state. So we're going to dive into that function really quickly. So as you can see, I've imported the AWS SDK library for Node.js. I've created an IoT data object that is bound to my account's endpoint, which gives this code permission to get and set properties on the IoT thing. And then I just construct the payload and pass along the state. If you notice in the previous slide, I was either sending the word on or off. Well, that gets passed into the JSON properties bundle for the IoT thing shadow where I'm setting it to lamp on or lamp off. And then issuing a callback function that says whether this was successful or not. So how does this interact with the AWS IoT thing? So I created a thing with no type in this case. Since I'm not scaling this out for thousands of leg lamps, I'm just going to do this one. Uh, I just have one thing. And that thing has properties, the shadow state. Again, this is persistent, whether the device is online or offline. And it tells you the last updated state. 
You can see I was messing with this recently. <laughs> so now let's jump over to the Raspberry Pi code. The Raspberry Pi code is quite um, you know, simple, I think. This is the entire source code for the Raspberry Pi uh, functionality to subscribe to the IoT thing shadow. If we look at this code at the top, I'm importing some certificates that you can bind a thing in the IoT service and issue certificates for individual devices or a group of devices that allow this client to publish or read properties from this thing shadow. I also import a, uh, another Node.js library called WPI to interact with Raspberry Pi pins. And then I register for what's called a foreign state change. After I connect to the IoT channel to listen for these updates, I register for an event called foreign state change, which is a signal to this code that someone else has updated the state. In this case, the someone else is the Alexa skill. You can see I'm logging here, message received on device, and then logging the change state. And then down on the hardware side, setting a high voltage on pin 25 if I want to turn it on, and setting a low voltage on pin 25 if I want to turn it off. So before I jump over to a demo, I want to show you guys that this isn't um, you know, fake. It's, this isn't, you know, just because it's in the deck, I actually have it running. And I'll jump over to the uh, console to show you where this code lives and how it's sort of connected to my Alexa skill. So I've got to switch. So I think you saw a snippet of this code. This is my actual AWS account, my personal one, where I've implemented this Lambda function. I've given it a name, reInvent Smart Home Function, and it has an ARN value that needs to be bound to the Alexa Smart Home skill. Now we can kind of look through this, whoa, sorry about that. We can look through this code and see the discovery method, the control method, and then some other, you know, update, well, the IoT method and some uh, boilerplate functions I wrote to, to help with logging and constructing response objects. So if we jump over to my skill, so in the developer console at developer.amazon.com, where you can sign in with your normal uh, Amazon account, this is where you create skills. In this case, I stood up a simple smart home skill. You notice that I'm on the interaction model tab, and it says the interaction model is already built into the smart home API. So this is where you don't have to worry about defining how a user interacts with your device and whether they say things strange or different. They, they need to say turn on or turn off, you know, dim, brighten, etc. If I look at the configuration, This is where I'm binding this skill to the, a, the, the Lambda ARN value. So this tells Alexa, when a user controls a device that you've reported, send that event to that Lambda. And hopefully the Lambda responds appropriately. The AWS console, again, not too exciting. I got the same my thing that I created before. If we click into this and look at the shadow properties, well, it's been updated since then, but I had to make sure this stuff was working. So you see the last reported state, the lamp was off. And finally, I'm logged into the Raspberry Pi up here on stage, and you see the messages that were in my code. You know, we connected. We're registering for the uh, updates on the thing shadow. And then we're going to report that someone changed that update. So hopefully, if all this glue is, is working, 
Let me turn it up so you can hear it. Turn on the lamp. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Yay. You notice the timestamp is real? It reported the lamp state is on. Let's see if the second time's a little snappier. Turn off the lamp. Okay. Okay. So what happened there? There's a lot of moving parts. There's a skill. There's Lambda code. There's an AWS IoT object, which really just represents properties in the cloud that are persistent. But let's take a look. Let me switch back to the slideshow here. Let's take a look at the call flow. So a user interacts with their Alexa device by saying something like, Alexa, turn on the lights. And an MP3 file is sent to the Alexa service, which goes through our language processing to determine that that was a turn on request and using the friendly name to send the appliance ID to the appropriate Lambda function. You know, in, in, in cases where you've bought smart home devices, a Philips Hue bulb or any other smart device, this same flow occurs, but it's sent to the Philips skill. So you saw that my Lambda function updates the IoT device with a state of on. And at the same time, the Raspberry Pi subscribes to that event and detects the foreign state change. Now, the update IoT device was successful, so I send a turn on confirmation back from my Lambda function, and you get the nice pleasant response of OK. So how would this scale? How would you add? other devices and other capabilities to make this more compelling than a single lamp. So you can imagine how easy it would be to use this technology stack, AWS IoT, a smart home skill, to add lights, coffee machines, sound systems, uh, star windows. <laughs> uh, to, to really start to create a compelling experience for your environment so that you can wrap these up into scenes and use things like, Alexa, turn on relax. Well, thank you guys very much. I know we're a little quick here. Um, if you guys have any questions, Mark and I will be over here on the side of the stage afterwards. I've also posted the source code for that project up on my personal GitHub, and you can follow us at uh, Alexa Devs on Twitter. Thanks, you guys.